Hello, Blizzard fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another Daily Blizzard upload. This is a game between Crank and Ruin Blaster on Terraform, the latter edition. For those of you not familiar with Crank, he is a professional Korean StarCraft II player who streams a lot and he plays random and he has very, very creative strategies. I contacted him on his YouTube page just a couple of days ago and said, hey, I'd like to cast your games and one of the subscribers plus one me and vouched for me, so later that day, Crank sent me a whole bunch of replays, which I'm very, very excited about, because anybody that plays random has my respect, and in addition, he is a member of Team Axiom, which garners even more respect from me. In the description, I will link you to his YouTube page, as well as his Twitch stream, very, very entertaining. I can't be here for you every single minute of the day, so for a couple of those hours, Crank can be there for you, as well. In the top left of Terraform, the latter edition, we have the Red Zerg player who chose random. It is Crank. And in the bottom right of Terraform, the latter edition, we have the blue Terran player. It is Ruin Blaster, who very boringly chose random in this ladder match. Can you believe it? Chose random, chose Terran. In this ladder match, can you possibly believe anybody would be ever so boring as to choose what race they wanted to play? Man, let's give it up for Ruin Blaster. Boo! Alright, so Crank going actually for Gas Spawning Pool Hatchery first here against the Terran, recognizing what the Terran player is going to be. Ruin Blaster is going to be the race of the Space Marines. So very safe to go that 15 hatch. And so Crank on his Team Liquid page does say he mains Protoss, but as I've said, he goes random, man. He plays whatever he's going to play. And in the end, he's excellent with all three races. So it's just super fun to watch. Again, he does weird stuff. He doesn't do standard strategies. He does proxies. He does like mass, I want to say like mass liberator play, and he plays uh, Terran and just crazy, crazy things you wouldn't ever expect. So I expect to see some good, good things here from Crank. It is a Reaper expand from our friend Ruin and Blaster. The Reaper's going to come up and try to ruin Crank's day. But guess what? Four Lings are on the way for Crank, as well as two Queens. And actually, where is this guy going? Is the Reaper trying to avoid the path of the Overlords? I think it is. Trying to be sneaky and get past this Overlord without being scouted. But you know what? You know what? It's a Terran player, Crank says. I understand. It's going to be a Reaper expand. That's why I have these Lings. That's why I'm getting the Ling speed. And that's why I have these Queens. So here comes the Reaper to see what damage it can do. The Lings immediately on the creep are going to get some shots off. Good micro. Moving the weakened one back. KDH hard whiffing on everything. The Reaper, again, trying to kill what it can, but once again, Crank is staying on the creep. That's what you need to do with slow lings. They do have the speed advantage with Reapers on the creep. Not so much off the creep. Oh, the Queen pops at just the right time. Gets the inject off. Probably gets to get some shots off there. Kitty 8 charge again, sending the drones running. But I don't think this Reaper is actually going to kill anything. Four amazingly well micro drones is all you need, but or Zerglings is all you need. But guess what? Two Reapers now. Reaper's heading on in to the main base. Two of them might pose a bit of a problem. KD8 charge does actually help to kill one of these lings. The two trying to kill one of these Reapers, but three of them have fallen. There's another one going to die. No, it saves just in the right time. The Queen does manage to actually get that Reaper down to four health. That one as well is super low. They need to back on out. Use their combat drugs to regenerate their health. Meanwhile, back in Terran home base, we're getting that orbital command that we need so much. We are getting some Hellions, it looks like, swapping over the factory. On to that reactor, and the barracks is moving out of the way as well. Are these guys healed up yet? Not quite yet. But we do have four more lings on the way, and an early, early lair here for Crank. Using additional lings here to kill these plates. Not just Protoss, not just Terran that do that. Zerg can do it as well. It's probably a carryover uh, from his Protoss days, Cranks rather. But Overlord sitting here over on this high ground. I don't think the Terran can actually spot that. Oh, look how well placed that is. Ruin Blaster can't see that at all all amazingly well placed look at that perfect scouting you can get with that overlord this guy too on the high ground scouting things that come over this way cannot be killed and this guy as well cannot die unless vikings come out or liberators and we do have some liberators coming out here for ruin blaster so he knows this is legacy of the void he knows you need liberators if you're going to play this game so he's going to make use of it spire on the way for crank could we see corruptors corruptors have been a good answer to liberators in the past for the zerg army but in the meantime here come some hellions here come some reapers but zero Zero drones have been killed so far for Crank. He is up 43 to 32, and this is something these harassing units are meaning to deal with and to rectify. They're sitting on the edge of the creep. They're being scattered out here. The Queen moves into position to block this off. Spinecrawler as well, not quite finished yet. KD8 Char does knock the Queen, sends it flying. That one as well gets flown into the air. Doesn't hurt it a whole lot, but enough. 
the speedlings come out, try to get a surround, and they do. They trap three of the Hellions. KD8 charge saves one of them, but does die eventually there in the end, chasing and chasing, and the entire army for Ruin Blaster gets taken out. That was a massively well, well played hold there from Crank. Needs to inject. There we go. I think we're actually, yep, we're on manual injects again. This is that latest patch of Legacy of the Void. You might see a mix of those on my channel. My posting schedule and how I've set things up has been a little bit weird lately. Here comes a Zergling counterattack, though. Getting right on into this natural base. Gonna get a surround on these Hellions, and they do! They catch one of them. Ooh, yes, they do kill one, and another one gonna die as well. Pretty good micro here from Ruin, though. Doesn't lose another one, though, which is nice. Banshee sitting out here on the creep. Can be seen by Crank. Is it waiting for Cloak? No, Cloak's not on the way. Maybe waiting for another Banshee, but the Mutas come out, and the Banshee says, yikes, we're out of here, boom. Ends up dead. Again, only Lings have died for Crank so far, most of them dying down here in this attack on the natural base, but still it is two base Terran to one base, or two base Crank, third base is on the way, not quite there yet, moving the Queen up to get those Injects off, but here comes the Muta Harass, and I don't know what we have to deal with it, with some Liberators coming up. Which is nice. Liberators do pretty darn well against Mutas. Maybe taking out some supply depots is the goal here for Crank. Nope. Gonna go after these juicy, juicy SCVs that are so squishy. Forces the retreat of all of those workers for Ruin Blaster. SCVs falling left and right. A total of two. Only two have died so far? Surprising. Widowmind shot. Oh, does take out a Mutalisk. Widowmind's at the top of the ramp. Is pretty good placement there from Ruin Blaster. Bouncing back and forth. Can't decide what to kill. Finally settles on this orbital command. Trying to slowly burrow up these Widow Mines into places to catch these guys. The Liberators are here now, though, and the Mutas know it's time to retreat. Liberators, if you haven't seen them before, they do have Liberator Missile Launchers. A normal attack. There that is. Right there. That does two attacks of seven. So 14 damage per volley, and it does splash damage as well. So it's really good against Mutalisks in these particular situations. So here we are with the Liberators. They're pretty darn good anti-Mutalisk uh, defense. They have Defender Mode, which attacks ground. It's right here. Defender Mode deploys. In this mode, Liberators inflict single target damage to ground units of 85 damage per shot, and Liberators cannot move in that mode. So that's the Liberator in a nutshell. Good anti-air, good anti-ground, but can't really move when they're in that anti-ground mode. So we'll have to see how much use it gets from Ruin Blaster. Good Terran players really know how to use this to the best of their abilities. Mutalisks flying around, just kind of staying on the creep, staying where it is safe. A small group of Hellions heading out to see, is there a third base by now? And of course there is. There's also a fourth base if you could check for that, but nope, choosing instead to go after these drones here at the third base. Do they have blue flame? They do not. There's a queen, but they just not enough damage done to the Hellions to really make a difference on this harass. So many drones are dying. They're not being pulled at all. The Mutas show up, but before that, nine drones have died at 61 to 51 total harvesters ruin blasters trying to keep up as best he can with this zerg economy but like i've said before another hellion dies like i've said before auto injects are nice on queens but when you have the manual injects and four, four is it five or is it four it's four or five extra larva per inject and you have a player as good as crank is and get those injects perfectly timed look at this queen six energy on this queen that's madness uh, what that basically means is you have an incredible economy advantage that is hard to deal with for other races. The missile turrets pop up, the liberators come in as well, get some volleys off, it back out. They recognize that Muta Cloud is pretty big, and if they magic box, which means they spread out and don't let themselves clump up too much, they could probably deal with this number of liberators just fine. They really need missile turret support or marine support, possibly, but no, we're just going for more and more liberators. Or is that plus two flyer attack? Plus two flyer attack, and ten more Mutas! On the way for Crank, he says, this Terran player is going Liberator. He thinks Liberators are the great anti-Muta. Let me show him who is boss. Crank's up to 86 Harvesters now. Probably wants to settle on that number. Definitely getting gas from the fourth base here. Excellent play indeed. Spinecrawler and a Spinecrawler just to deal with any more Hellion Harass. Not too worried about Banshees, it turns out. He did see the one Banshee, but that's probably a good choice considering there are no Banshees on the map. He doesn't know that, but still... Hellions trying to fly in, but guess what? Mutas are faster than Hellions, and all of them get cleaned up. Explosions, fireworks, dead. Thor's on the way. Thor's can be pretty good as well, but 27 Mutalisks on the field right now for Crank. He owns the skies. He owns the map. Ruin Blaster can only sit back and wait. Wait for his anti-Mutalisk defense, which is going to be Thor's, which is going to be Liberator's. He's going to try to make this work. The Mutas are going to swoop in, though, for a big attack. There are turrets, but there are just too many Mutas. 
The turrets aren't really making much of a difference. Good Widowmine Splash, though. Thor as well, getting a few shots off. Liberators coming in. The Mutas are pretty clumped up. A lot of them are very, very weak, and Liberators getting shots off with those missile launchers, killing as many as they possibly can. The Mutas finally do manage to get some separation there. There is a missile turret here as well, and it's enough to actually drive off Crank. He wants to kill stuff, but if he stays still too long, this Liberator group might actually kill him. So, hey... Liberators, that was a lot of mutas. What did I say that was? 26, we're down to 13. Now we have lost 16 mutalisks in this battle, in this game so far. That poor overlord's been scouting forever and just gets killed like there's nothing to it. The creep spread again is pretty, pretty, pretty freaking amazing here from Crank. For somebody that mains Protoss, Crank Zerg is a little bit insane. Creep tumors are dying though with this push from Ruin Blaster. The mutas flying around the backside. I don't know who's going to win at this point. The mutas are trying to deal with this third place, trying to lock it down, but those missile turrets hit pretty darn hard. Setting up here as well. Roaches on the ground, but there are tanks. There are Thors. There is defender mode from the Liberators. How is this going to work? Setting up. There it is. There's the offensive defender mode setting up the circles of death right here as we move in to kill the third base. The Mutas, though, have this base entirely on lockdown. It is basically a base trade right now. Defender mode here to kill these Roaches. They try to retreat. A couple of them die. Anyway, Hydras come in at the wrong time. They all get roasted to death. Liberators coming up, trying to set up defender mode in different locations, killing overlords as well. That's exactly what they want to do. Tanks have this on lockdown. Liberators still have this on lockdown. This Muta Force trying to do what it can, but this natural is too well defended for Ruin Blaster. The third base is dead. Can we kill the fourth base as well is going to be the question for Ruin. He's going to try to make it happen. Drone comes up a little bit sloppy there from Crank, but I think he's going to be okay. Losing an overlord. Defender modes... Coming up again. Anybody want to try to kill me? Mutas fly in saying, hey, you don't have any anti-air right here, but there are Widow Mines. Look out. Oh, my gosh, Widow Mines. Oh, the Mutas die, but there's a Roach Hydra army coming. They are coming for you, Ruin Blaster. You need to be very, very careful about it. These tanks get killed immediately. The damage being done to this fourth base is massive, though. Can we kill it? I think we're going to be able to do so. Walking into this defender mode, all these roaches are going to die. Hiders coming from the backside with the roaches as well. Sniping down liberators as best as they possibly can. The Thors trying to kill everything at the same time. The defender mode circles are in the wrong place. Liberators trying to retreat and actually Crank saves his fourth base. He saves the fourth. Amazing. Lost the third. Replanting the third here. Probably a good choice. As well, Widowmines, Liberators, Hellions coming in. The Roaches have plus one, plus one upgrades as well as the Hydralisks. They're not super amazing, but here we come. We're going to try to deal with this again. Not placed, not a good place to hang out there. Tr splitting up, running away. Widowmines are actually pretty quick for a unit that's that small. They run pretty darn fast here. Liberators might try to set up some defender modes. We have Widowmines here. Three kills, one kill, two kills, two kills, two kills, and six kills. That is a Corporal. Oh, another shot on those would be huge. Oh, they get out just in time. Roach's Hydra is dying left and right, though. Finally, the Overseers come in, and all those Widowmines end up dead, but... Coming back for round two, is Ruin Blaster going to try to do this? It's 113 to 139 supply. Moving on in, onto the creep, going to try to kill some more of this creep teamers. Has a fourth base of his own, throwing down those mules, recognizing that the Overlord is here, and he is scouted out. It has to be something of a worry, but man, he reestablished that third very, very quickly. Indeed, it's going to be Roach Hydra. It looks like from now on, no more mutas for Crank. As creep tumors get killed, small groups of roaches are here. The Liberators need to back out. There's a lot of hiders, and the tanks... The tanks, though, are set up. Tanks with plus one attack are trying to stay alive. Liberators could probably use some defender mode here, but I don't really know. There it is. Defender mode circles coming on in. The Liberators sniping down what they possibly can, but good micro here from Crank getting on out. The Hydra sniping down one. And is he going to get the rest of these Liberators? No, the Liberators do escape with their lives. It's 151 to 89 supply. Crank is macroing amazingly well. Ah, oh, coming around to catch the rest of these Liberators. Another couple shots. Boom. Liberator dies. The defender mode from behind the rocks is a good choice, though. Yikes, look out! Look out, Hydras! Oh, splash damage from the tanks. Defender mode as well. We're losing a lot of roaches and Hydras here. Crank, not really being too careful with his units. Lost a lot in that attack into this little choke point here. And it's now 127, 149 to 98 supply. Crank had a little burst of macro there. How are our upgrades doing? Plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two. Just about to finish. More and more Hydras coming in as well. Tanks are a pretty good answer for this choice here from Crank. And, oh, Hellions swooming back here to kill drones. 43 drones have died in this game. All the Hellions died, but that's probably fair. Roach Hydra Army shows up to deny 
the fourth base. Overlord dies, unfortunately, for Crank, but he has 160 supply. He's not going to be supply blocked anytime soon. Ruin Blaster just kind of having a hard time keeping up in the macro game. Uh, he's spending his money well. He's doing that pretty well, but he only has 44 Harvesters. I suppose Crank only has 54, so it's a pretty low econ game right now for LOTV at the 14-minute mark. Another base has been established with the Planetary. This one's risky because you can get units back here for the enemy that can kill your SCVs from behind the mineral line. It's hard to defend against that. Going for the kill again, though, is Ruin Blaster. Hellbats in the front, taking a lot of the damage. Tanks not even sieging up, though. Defender mode coming down. These roaches are going to take some shots very, very shortly. But no, the Liberator dies. That's it. Ruin Blaster calls the GG. Crank is victorious, and Ruin Blaster has left the game. What an amazing tech switch there from Crank. He had the big Mutaflock. He did fairly good damage, taking out that third base earlier. Recognizing, though, that Liberators are super good against Mutas as well as those Widow Mines, he switches over to Roach Hydra, makes it happen against this mech composition, just with better positioning against the Liberators, coming in from the backside whenever he possibly could to kill those Liberators. Remember this battle back here as well it was very important that way. Saving the fourth base was key, I believe, at the same time. And in the end, Crank was just incredible. I mean, if all the replays he sent me are like this, I cannot wait to cast more and more of them. Thanks again, Crank. Again, check out the description for links to his Twitch channel and his Twitch stream and his YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much. And as always, this has been Falcon Paladin with yet another Daily Blizzard upload. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, you take care of yourself.